Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignInTechTips.com. Well, we've got a little image morph or image swap to you today and we've got a little bit of text in there in the form of a blurb module. And it's going to cycle around automatically when you load the page. It's going to switch one image to another. And when it comes back, it's going to come back in with a bit of text and an icon there. Really easy to do. We've got to do a tiny bit of coding for this today. Don't let that put you off as usual. Any code I write, I'll put down below. You're welcome to copy, paste it, and use it as you wish. Okay, well, let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder so we can build on the front end. Okay, let's go down and we'll just get rid of this module here. Right, let's get rid of this whole row. Okay, so I've got a section here, the blue tab. I'm going to add a row. For my purposes today, I'm going to use a single column. Inside that column, I'm going to put a blur module. Now, this will work with a call to action or any little module that you actually want to use today. I'm simply going to use a blur module purely because it's got a little icon for a bit of fun. There it is right there. Okay, well, I'm going to put an image in the background of this, and I'm going to use an icon. I'll just slightly change the text a little bit. I'm not going to go too crazy with this. Obviously, the design's up to you. So I'm just going to say, visit today as my title. And down below, you've got a regular text box. You can add or take away whatever text you want there. Of course, you can align, bold, italicize, add headings if you want to, and also add media. I'm going to leave mine just as it is. Image and icon, I'm going to use an icon for mine today. And it really doesn't matter what, let's use an exclamation mark. That seemed to work quite well last time. There we go. I'm going to pop my text in the middle. So I'm going over to the design tab now. In fact, before I do that, let's stay on the content. Let's put a background image in. And this is the image that you want to see initially. So I'm going to go down content I'm going to go down to background here and I'm going to pop an image in you've got color gradient image so pop an image in there and I guess I'll use the same one as I used before that one right there okay well our text is getting a bit lost in there and it's not really the shape that I want it so let's take care of that I'm going to make the icon and the writing all white so let's go to the design tab now Image and icon is the first one. I'm simply going to make mine white. And let's roll on down a bit now to text just down below. I'm going to pop mine in the middle. I'm going to change it from dark to light. That's fine. It's still getting a bit lost in there, but we'll take care of that in a minute. You can also custom style both your title and your heading down below title and body text. In fact, let's make that title bold and a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make it bold. And as I'm sure you know, if you've watched any of my other Divi videos, Divi comes with a huge selection of fonts. They have got a crazy amount of fonts. And to audition one, just roll over it and it'll give you an example. I'm going to leave mine on the custom today. But you're not going to run out of fonts quickly with Divi, that's for sure. I think I'm going to capitalize my title there. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. You can slide up or you can type in a value, however you like to do it. Okay, well let's make this image more of a shape that I want to see. I mean that's okay, but I want to give it a bit of padding top and bottom and make it fairly large and eye-catching. So if we roll on down a bit further, I'm going to do that in spacing. And I'm going to add, say, 150 pixels top and bottom. Just put in the number, it'll put in the pixels for you hit the chain, it'll do the opposite side. Great. Well, that's kind of the shape that's going to work for me. But what I want is to read this writing a bit better. So I'm going to merge a color with this image as well. And to do that, I'm going to go back to my content and back to my background here. And you can do this with a gradient as well. And of course, you've got video, you've got background patterns and background masks you can play with. I'm going to use a simple color. I'm going to put a simple blue in there. And you might say, well, I can't see any difference. Well, you'd be absolutely right. What we need to do now is go over to the image right here. Just click on it. Make sure you, you've got parallax effect turned to no, which is the default state there, or else this won't work. What we're going to do, we're going to roll down a bit. 
and we've got background image blend. I'm going to flip mine to multiply and it's going to multiply that blue color with our image. That makes it a lot easier to read that text and you can still see a nice image behind there. It works for me. These blends have got some fantastic things. Do have a look at them because you can get some really great little effects going by having a look at some of these. You really can get some fantastic effects. That's pretty cool. I'm going to leave mine on screen today or multiply actually seem to work best for me. There we go. Great. OK, so we're still in our blurb. I'm actually going to give this a custom ID now so that I can target it with a bit of code and make it fade out. And we'll put a background image in so we can fade between the two. So if we go over to the advanced, down to CSS IDs and classes, you can call it anything you want. It wants to be unique and it wants to mean something to you. So I'm going to say IMBL. SW for that's kind of my shorthand for image blurb swap. Obviously, call yours what you want, but like I say, it wants to be unique and it kind of wants to mean something to you. That way, if you see it in the code, you'll know what it means. Okay, well, let's save that. I'm now actually going to go into the row itself, so I'm going to click on my little image here and go up to the green tab, which is the row. And I'm going to put a background in here. We're on content, we're in a row. I'm going to roll down. And let's choose an image that you want to sort of swap between the two. So I'm going to go over to my images again. I'm going to add a background image. And you can use any, any image you want. I guess I'll use the same one as I did before, that sort of nice bit of grassy field there. OK, and we've got a little bit spilling out top and bottom there. We can get rid of that by taking the padding away from our row. That's a bit of padding top and bottom on the row there. So if we go over to design and spacing, here's padding. I'm just going to simply put a zero in. I'll get rid of that top bit, hit the chain. That'll get rid of our bottom bit. Great. Well, that's the easy bit done. Obviously, you can't see that picture. Now I'm going to have this fade out into that other picture, perhaps over 10 or 15 seconds or even 20 seconds. So we've given it a class. Let's save everything here. Now I'm going to save my page and exit the Visual Builder. Now to do this today, we need to go to our customizer. So if we go to our dashboard, onto the dashboard, go down to appearance and then customize. Now I've temporary, temporarily set my page as the home page for this so you can see what's going on here. And I've done that in the home page settings. You don't need to do that. I've just done that so you can see what's going to happen when I do the coding. For the coding, we need to go down to the additional CSS. And there's the initial code I put in. So let's get rid of that and we'll start from scratch. Now I called this, or we gave this the class of IMBLSW for image blurb swap, or my shorthand. So it's a class. All classes need a dot or a period in front of them. I M B L S W. Great. Now let's open and close some curly brackets and decide what we want it to do. Okay, well, I want it to do an animation. So we need to create an animation, which I'll do in a minute. So I'm going to say animation. And let's make a name for our animation. So we're going to say colon. And I'm just going to say image swap. That's fine. How long do we want it to take? Well, that's entirely up to you. I'm going to have my cycle between the images take about 20 seconds. Maybe a bit slow for some people. I'm just going to say 20s. And I want it to keep on going and keep on going. And to make that happen, I need to say infinite. Now put a semicolon. Great. So now we need to actually create this animation called image swap right there. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to drop down a little bit more. I'm going to say at keyframes because that's what we're going to use to animate this today, at keyframes. Then I want to give it the name, image swap, we gave that animation name. Now I can open and close some more curly brackets and we can decide how we're going to make this work today. 
So I'm going to start at 0%, basically when the page loaded. So I'm going to say 0%. Now I'm going to open and close some more curly brackets. And I want it to be fully visible. So I'm going to say opacity. Opacity is transparency or see-throughness, if you will. And it goes from 0 to 1. 1 is fully visible. So I'll put a 1 in there. I want it fully visible. Now I'm actually going to copy this. We can split this up, just make it look a little tidier by putting the little key curly brackets either side there. Now I'm going to copy that from the 0% to that little first curly bracket there. Remember all our little keyframes are wrapped in these curly brackets so you want to make sure you're not copying those as well. It's just the internal. So I'm going to copy that, Control C, I'm going to drop down, I'm going to paste it in there and I'm going to say 50%. I want the opacity to be 0, which is totally transparent. And you can do 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And as you can see, that's actually changed now. And it's actually going to do that. It's going to change over 20 seconds. It's going to go from one to the other. But I want to bring it back smoothly. And to do that, I'm going to go up to 100% and make sure that the opacity is back to 1. So I'm going to copy this again. I'm going to drop down one more. I'm going to change that to 100 and I'm going to put the opacity back to 1. That way it's going to go from fully visible to transparent back to fully visible and it should be a lot smoother if you put that last one in there. And there it is, it's happening. Obviously if it's too quick or too slow for you, change the timing up here. For instance if I change that to 10, it's going to do it a lot quicker. But that's entirely up to you. I kind of like the slower one a little bit. But again, it's all subjective and that's up to whatever it is you like. And don't forget, I'll put this code down below. When you write CSS, it's always a good idea to give it a title. That way, if you write a lot of it, it's easier to find. Or if somebody edits your site after you, it just makes it easier for them. To do a title, do forward slash, star star, forward slash. Anything that you write in between the two stars there will not be read as code. So it's a great place for titles and notes and things. So I'm just going to say image to blur. And there we go. Now, anything that you give that class to now will do this keyframe. So you can set up other things to morph between things in 15 or 20 seconds if you want to. But that's how we've done that today. So let's publish our changes now. And if I go back and refresh this page, this should start animating. And there we go. So every 20 seconds, it's going to sort of revolve around, bring in that blur module. And like I say, that's going to get people's attention fairly quickly. And it should work perfectly on mobile devices as well. Let's just check that. I'm using Google Chrome. If I hit the F12 key, Just roll this down out of the way. There it is on an iPad. As you can see, that's working perfectly. And here it is on an iPhone. If we can find one, let's say iPhone 12 Pro. And as you can see, it's morphing in and out there as well, or fading, I should say, really. I think for that, I might add a little bit more padding left and right there. That's no problem at all. That's the only adjustment that I'd make for that on the mobile. But apart from that, we seem to be good to go. So there you go, guys. There's how to use keyframes to morph between a little module and a little background image there. That's a nice little effect to have on your site. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.